Today, we're gonna talk about PayPal and their upcoming Q1 earnings. We'll touch on analyst expectations around where PayPal will report on their top and bottom lines, as well as take a look back at their guidance that they provided for the full year as well as this current quarter and how that compares to analyst expectations. And finally, we will take a look at PayPal's valuation based on their earnings and what that could mean for the price in the future. So if you enjoy the video, drop a like down below, and if you wanna see more videos like this one, make sure to subscribe. Let's start off by taking a look at PayPal's chart. We can see that over the last month, the stock is down about 2.5%. However, when you go over the last six months, PayPal is up almost 20%. And over the course of the last year, it is still down about 13%. However, from the lows back in October of around $50, the stock has ran up almost 30%. And the large run-up from PayPal really doesn't have anything to do with the fundamentals behind the business. This is something that happened in the broader market as well. It was a valuation shift as the Fed began talking about the potential lowering of interest rates in 2024. We can see that the S&P 500 over the same time period is up about 23%. So really this 27% move up is primarily just in line with the rest of the market as valuations have gone up on the back of potential lowering of interest rates. For a move that would outpace the market, we need to see something fundamentally change with the business. And the best times for those things to occur is during earnings announcements. And we are expecting PayPal to announce their earnings on April 30th. And right now, analysts are expecting PayPal to put up an EPS number of $1.22 and a revenue of $7.52 billion. Those numbers on their own don't provide a whole lot of context. So let's take a look at what Yahoo analysts are expecting. There are 33 analysts covering this stock on Yahoo Finance. They have an average EPS estimate of $1.13 a low estimate of $0.87, cents and a high estimate of $1.17. Their average EPS estimate is down year over year from $1.17 a year prior. And for the full year, Yahoo Finance analysts also expect EPS to drop slightly. They have an average EPS estimate of $4.74 for 2024, compared to a year ago when they put up $4.79. And for top line revenue numbers, Yahoo Finance analysts have an average estimate estimate of $7.05 billion. That is only an increase of 0.1% year over year from $7.04 billion. And even with the slow Q1, they're still expecting revenue to grow by about 7% in 2024. So we'll come back to those numbers in a second. However, let's take a look first at what PayPal actually was expecting for Q1, as well as their full year guidance for 2024. For Q1 of 2024, PayPal is expecting their revenue to increase by about 6.5% year over year. They're also expecting their non-GAAP EPS to increase by mid-single digits from around $1.17 a year prior. So ultimately, what this means is these Yahoo Finance estimates are a little bit low compared to what PayPal actually expects themselves to put up. Their EPS is low by about $0.10 cents on this average EPS estimate, and their average revenue estimate is low by about a half a billion dollars. So basically what that means Means is Google's numbers are a lot more accurate compared to Yahoo Finance. If you just Google PayPal earnings, you'll get a page like this that shows an EPS estimate of $1.22, which is in line with what PayPal themselves are expecting, and revenue of $7.52 billion. And personally, I think they could actually beat both of these estimates. One reason is due to the fact that we have seen them consistently beat on both their top and bottom line numbers almost every quarter for the last year. The other reason I think PayPal could come through with the solid beat is because we have seen Visa's numbers now. They reported on April 23rd and they came in with a 3% beat on their EPS numbers and a 1.7% beat on their top line. It's not a perfect translation between Visa and PayPal's earnings. However, when you see the payment industry doing well as a whole, whether it's Visa, PayPal, MasterCard, if they are doing well, the broader market seems to be doing well because the consumer is spending, they're using their credit cards, they're paying with payment services, they're buying things out in the economy, and that helps companies across the board. And the last reason I think PayPal could come through with a solid beat on this earnings is because when they released their fiscal 24 guidance, a lot of people looked at Alex Chris and saw that this was his first guidance and felt that he was sandbagging some of his numbers, that he was providing lower guidance so they could consistently come through and beat. This is something that Intuit did very well, and Alex Chris probably learned from that company 
that it's important to come through and beat your earnings. It's even better to beat your earnings than just hitting expectations on a consistent basis because investors want to see you continue to grow and continue to overachieve. And when we look at some of these numbers for 2024, especially this gap EPS number, they estimated only $3.60 compared to a year prior of $3.84. So this is a very significant decline in EPS that they're expecting and the stock reacted down because of this guidance. However, as we go through the year, if they come through and even meet this $3.84, that should help boost the stock up at least slightly. And fundamentally, PayPal's been a very solid company over the last couple of years. It's growing in the mid to upper single digit range, anywhere from around 6.5% all the way up to 10% over the last two years. And right now, analysts are actually expecting the growth to slow down even further, which personally I don't see. We see a lot of other companies actually starting to accelerate their top line growth. And I think PayPal could see that in the back half of this year. And they've had a strong rebound on their bottom line numbers as well. They sunk down to a dollar and 74 cents of gap trailing EPS. That was back in mid 2022. However, since then they've grown back up to $3.84 of gap EPS. That's still down from their all time high EPS of $4.39. However, they seem to be headed in the right direction. And again, I think if they can get back to top line growth in the back half of this year, we should start seeing their EPS potentially surpass this $4.39. Because of some of these concerns around growth and whether the company is suffering from some of the competition coming into this market, the forward P ratio has sunk down all the way to a 12.36. And compared to the broader market, this is very low. The S&P 500 is currently trading at a forward P ratio of a 20.65, while the NASDAQ 100 is trading at a forward P of 26.22. If we assume Yahoo Finance analysts are correct and PayPal only puts up $4.74 of EPS this year, that means the current forward P ratio would be sitting at a 13.59. And compared to the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ, which is anywhere from that 20 to 25 range, we can see that the valuation is incredibly low. And if PayPal were to trade up into that range of valuations, that would mean that the stock price would be anywhere between $94, $95, all the way up to $120, which would be a 50 to 83% gain in the stock price. And if we assume PayPal is correct in their guidance of $5.10, that puts our forward P ratio at a 12.63. And if it were to trade in line with the broader market, anywhere from a 20 to 25 forward P ratio, that means that the stock price would be in the range of $102 to $130, which would be a 60 to an almost 100% gain from the current stock price. And the valuation is the biggest reason why I own PayPal shares. I think that it is tremendously undervalued. When we just compare it to the broader market, it doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense of where its valuation is sitting at. If PayPal is able to continue the revenue gains of anywhere from 7 to 10% and continue to grow their EPS numbers, I think that they are tremendously undervalued. I think they should be trading in at least that 20 to 25 range. If they can get back to 10 to 15 or even 20% top line growth, that would accelerate their valuation up to that 30 to maybe even 35 PE ratio range. However, I think they're a long ways away from that. I really want to just see them maintain this at least 7 to 10, maybe up to 12% growth year over year. That would be very solid for the company. When it comes to this first quarter, I want to see them put up a solid beat on their top and bottom line numbers. This would instill a lot of confidence back in investors that there was some sandbagging when it came to their full year guidance. However, do not buy a company just because some random guy on YouTube talked about it. Make sure you are doing your own research and looking into companies that meet your risk tolerance as well as your time horizon. So with all that said, I hope you enjoyed the video. If it did, drop a like down below. And if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure to subscribe. And as always, guys, have a wonderful rest of your day. And for the joke of the day, what do you say when a chicken is looking at a salad? Check the comments down below for the answer. Thanks for watching.